You've probably seen it in cartoons or movies hundreds of times. A prisoner receives an innocent looking cake only to slice it open to discover a hacksaw hidden inside. It's, it's the classic prison break trope, but a question that's been bugging me is what if instead of smuggling in a simple tool, you wanted to sneak an entire computer into prison? Could you actually bake a fully functional PC inside of a cake and have it still work afterwards? Well, there's only one way to find out, so let's walk through exactly what we discovered together by dissecting a fresh freshly baked computer cake layer by layer. Starting from the top, we immediately extract what appears to be an RX 550 graphics card. And I, I have to admit, I'm genuinely surprised the plastic exterior is still intact. Most GPU shrouds are made from either ABS plastic or polypropylene, both materials that have relatively low melting points all things considered, typically well below the 350 degree Fahrenheit temperature required to bake most cakes. So honestly, it seems like we're off to a favorable start. The HDMI port also looks pretty promising. Thankfully, it was wrapped in tin foil during the baking process, so it's completely free of cake batter. However, the same cannot be said for the rest of the GPU, whose fan is completely jammed full of sugary coating, which has most certainly also invaded the underlying internals of this as well. Will this still work? Uh, time will tell. Digging deeper into our edible electronics experiment, we now uncover a two and a half inch hard drive in the second layer of cake. Okay, this discovery raises some serious concerns about something called the Curie point, the critical temperature at which magnetic materials lose their permanent magnetic properties. Basically, when materials reach their Curie point, thermal energy becomes so intense that it can disrupt the alignment of atomic magnets. That's right, when magnets get too hot, they stop becoming magnets. And since since traditional hard drives store all of their data magnetically, this could spell disaster for our experiment by potentially wiping our entire drive. Now, the carry point for modern hard drives probably hovers around 500 degrees Fahrenheit or so, depending on the actual metal used, which is significantly higher than the temperature used to bake this cake, so hopefully we're able to uh, just totally dodge that bullet in particular. Hopefully. Knock on wood. And carrying on deeper still, at the heart of our cake, we find the crown jewel, a fully encased mini ITX motherboard complete with CPU and RAM. Convenient. Up until this point, I hadn't really considered the fact that cake batter does require water as a main ingredient, and as you know, water and electronics don't mix nicely. However, assuming that this portion of cake was baked thoroughly and isn't all too moist at the time of powering on, I'm honestly not too worried about the moisture shorting out any of the traces. Even still though, this motherboard is certainly the roughest looking out of all the components we've pulled out so far. Batter is in all of these nooks and crannies. I, I honestly don't think I could clean this even if I tried. So back to our initial question, can you build a functional PC from components that are fully baked inside of a cake? Well, as we assemble this all together and short out the power pins, we're not actually seeing that many signs of life. But don't worry, I have a few tricks up my sleeve. The first being letting this sit overnight so that the cake batter completely dries out. And in the meantime, let's write up a prediction bot in Python to calculate the odds of our baked PC actually booting up. Tech tinkering and writing code go so hand in hand, it's easy to recommend today's video sponsor, Boot.dev, who help make it easy to start learning backend development in a really fun way. They've essentially gamified coding lessons by introducing lore, bosses, quests, even an AI bear that you can tempt with salmon to help give you hints along the way. His name's Boots, by the way, he's pretty cool. They offer these fully fleshed out backend development courses in a ton of different languages. I chose to go with the Python and Go course, which honestly starts off with some pretty simple lessons, but over the course of an entire year, will encapsulate building multiple multiple real projects from the ground up, like an Asteroids game or a Pokédex. As you progress, you unlock XP, and at one point I was leading my league as a top daily learner, but as you can see, Wade here has, uh, he's been crushing me, so I gotta catch up. This site does do a pretty good job of dangling carrots in front of you, so you don't get too bored with all this coding stuff as a beginner. So if you've been looking for a sign to get into backend development, head over to boot.dev and try it out completely for free to see if the courses resonate with you. And if they do, you can use code MrYeaster for 25% off your entire first year on the annual subscription. Thanks again to boot.dev for sponsoring this quite honestly deranged PC experiment, which our prediction bot is now saying only has a 1% chance of still working. And that said though, overnight something magical did happen, because when I entered the studio this morning, the CPU fan was actively spinning. And on top of that, the hard drive was also chirping quite a bit. Clearly, some aspects of this PC survived the cake bake. So now it's time to take a closer look at each component, starting with the CPU itself. Honestly, this thing does not appear too out of whack, all things considered. 
better. Like, if we take it out, the pads on the underside are flawless, and although I don't think it should impact performance, we can go ahead and scrape off as much of the dried cake batter from the IHS as we can. And now transferring it over to a test rig, we can see that it does actually boot and is fully recognized, which is wild, meaning that CPUs can in fact be baked inside of a cake and still function. I suppose this makes sense because CPUs do probably generate the most heat out of anything within a computer, so the fact it was able to survive being baked in an oven does, I suppose, make sense. But this is just our very first survivor. Let's find out if there's any more. The RAM honestly does look like in a pretty similar condition as the CPU, with the pins looking seemingly unaffected by the cake. And given the fact that RAM doesn't have too much surface area for something to go wrong, it seems like this should still work. But that said, adding this to our test bench proves otherwise, because the system simply will not post a signal with it installed. Which honestly did surprise me, but safe to say that this RAM is cooked. Literally. It's worth noting at this point that 350 degrees Fahrenheit, the, the temperature that cakes bake at, is well over the stated operating temperatures for every single one of these PC components. So the fact that we might find any, any survivors at all out of this, uh, uh, frankly, is a wild testament to just how resilient computer parts actually are. And interestingly, there's also a legitimate computer repair technique called reflowing that involves intentionally baking motherboards or graphics cards inside of conventional ovens. The added heat can melt and reseat solder joints it's potentially fixing faulty connections, but I mean, it's basically like a last resort troubleshooting method when all else fails. And it also typically requires much higher temperatures than what this cake was baked at. But with that in mind, testing the GPU up next seems like it should have a fighting chance, right? That said, so far, this thing has not shown much life at all. Like the fan hasn't even budged a bit when, when turned on. You'd normally expect that to move even if it wasn't posting a signal, but so far the cake batter appears to be keeping this like really stuck together. Although since our CPU GPU works, I'm still clinging on to some hope for our GPU as well. Despite that though, I'm really just not able to get the PC to post with the graphics card installed, which is honestly kind of a bummer. I still haven't lost all hope, this honestly might just need like a complete teardown to fully free the fan and dry out any of the moist batter that's stuck internally. Maybe something's getting shorted underneath the shroud and the PCB, we'll have to take a look at that in a little bit. But now, the thing that I'm most curious to test is the hard drive, the two and a half inch mechanical drive. This is one of the more unique items because, like I said earlier, it stores data magnetically, which, as we talked about, has some super interesting interactions with high levels of heat. It also definitely doesn't help that cake batter is like blocking these SATA ports, but whatever. The fact that this was making noise at all during our initial test means that, mechanically, there's still a chance this is not completely fried, but that's only half the battle, because the other half is, well, can we actually read any information off these disk platters? Or did we destroy all that information by introducing too much heat to destroy those magnets? As, as we boot the PC one final time, oh my gosh, look at that. Not only is it recognized by the PC, it's, it's actually loading windows from the hard drive, meaning that the data is still intact. Quite honestly, that is absurd, meaning that thankfully we did not hit the curry point for this hard drive. We're, we're still we're still booting off this thing. Meaning that in conclusion, if you ever happen to need to sneak computer components into a prison via cake, um, uh, personally, I would leave out the motherboard, RAM, and graphics card, but I, I, would, I would feel confident tossing in as many CPUs and mechanical hard drives as I could fit. <laughs> now, from a safety perspective, this experiment can actually be pretty dangerous since baking computer components can release fumes that you don't really want to be around. And those can also seep into whatever else you're cooking in that oven. So first of all, I would not advise eating anything that has been baked in computer components. So unfortunately, I can't just chow down on the rest of this cake residue. But even more so, if you do happen to bake a GPU or motherboard for, um, for in the case of the reflowing technique, I'd also recommend getting a cheap toaster oven like this one to avoid using your main oven altogether. That way you can stay safe and healthy and uh, keep your food and PC components completely separate. But that's all I have for you today, so let me know if you have any other fun PC experiment ideas that you'd like me to try out, and uh, well, I've been Mr. Easter, your tech tinkerer, and I will catch you in the next one. Aw, yeah!